Good day, my dear grade 10 learners. How are you today? I hope that you are doing well. Welcome to this episode of Learning in the World of Mathematics. This is Miss Christine Joy Arumin, your math teacher. Today, we are going to learn about illustrating mutually exclusive events, which is in Module 8 of the third quarter. And here are some reminders before we start with our lesson. First, watch this video lesson until the end so you will get acquainted with our lesson. Second, be attentive and stay focused. Third, be prepared with your self-learning module, pen, in a notebook so you can take down notes. And here are some COVID-19 prevention reminders. But before we proceed with our discussion, do you still remember how to calculate simple probability? Well, let me test your understanding first of the past lesson with this example. And here is our problem. A jar contains 8 yellow candies, 5 red candies, 6 green candies, 4 blue candies, and 7 purple candies. If a candy is picked at random from the jar, what is the probability that the candy picked is a yellow candy, blue candy, and purple candy? Now, to get the probability of simple events, we have to use this formula of simple probability. For our problem, we have to get first the total number of candies and that is our sample space. So we have 8 plus 5 plus 6 plus 4 plus 7 is equals to 30. Starting with our letter A, the number of ways to pick a yellow candy is actually 8. So therefore, the probability of getting a yellow candy is 8 over 30 or 4 over 15. Our second problem is to get the probability that a candy picked is a blue candy. The number of ways to get a blue candy is equal to 4. So therefore, the probability of getting a blue candy is equal to 4 over 30 or 2 over 15. And for our third problem, what is the probability that a candy picked is a purple candy? The number of ways to pick a purple candy is 7. So therefore, the probability of getting a purple candy is equals to 7 over 30. That's a great job, everyone! Our lesson objectives At the end of this lesson, you should be able to 1. Identify and define mutually exclusive and not mutually exclusive events 2. Determine mutually exclusive and not mutually exclusive events 3. Find the probability of a mutually exclusive and not mutually exclusive events. Before moving on with our lesson, let us have this activity first occurring inspection. You have 5 seconds to answer each question. Given the following, could the two events A and B in the following situations happen at the same time? If yes, Put a check in the box and if no, put a cross. Number 1. You toss a coin. Event A, you get a head. Event B, you get a tail. And the answer is... Cross. We cannot get a head and tail at the same time. Number 2. A card is drawn from a standard of 50 playing cards. Event A, a spade is drawn. Event B, a king is drawn. Your timer starts now. And the answer is checked. We can have a spade and king at the same time through king of spade. Number 3. One student is elected as SSG president. Event A, Duardo is elected as SSG president. Event B, Amelia is elected as SSG president. What will be your answer? Timer starts now.
The answer is X because only one student can be elected as SSG president. Number 4. Your wallet contains 3 20 peso bills and 5 100 peso bills. A single bill is picked. Event A, you get a 20 peso bill. Event B, you get a 100 peso bill. Your timer starts now. And the answer is X because it was instructed that you will only get a single bill and you cannot have a 20 and 100 peso bill at the same time. Lastly, number 5. You roll a 6-sided die. Event A, you get a 4. Event B, you get an even number. Will this happen at the same time? The answer is, check. This event can happen at the same time because 4 is an even number and can be one of the even numbers in a 6-sided die. Did you get a high score? If that's so, good job! Let us now proceed to our lesson, which is illustrating mutually exclusive events. The events in our previous activity may either be mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive events. What is mutually exclusive events? So by definition, mutually exclusive events are events that cannot occur or happen at the same time. On the opposite, not mutually exclusive events are events that can happen or occur at the same time. Let us go back to our previous activity and let us try to identify which of the events are mutually exclusive and which are not mutually exclusive events. So number one, you toss a coin, it is mutually exclusive. Number two, a card is drawn from a standard of 50 to playing cards, it is not mutually exclusive. Number three, one student is elected as SSG president, it is mutually exclusive. Number four, your wallet contains 320 peso bills and 5 100 peso bills, it is mutually exclusive. And number five, you roll a six-sided die, it is not mutually exclusive. In other words, in probability of mutually exclusive events, if two events, A and B, are mutually exclusive, then the probability that either event A or B occurs is the sum of their probabilities. In symbol, that is, the probability of A or B is equals to the probability of A plus the probability of B, or the probability of A union B is equals to the probability of A plus the probability of B, which means the probability of A intersection B is equals to zero. On the opposite, in probability of not mutually exclusive events, if two events, A and B, are not mutually exclusive, then the probability that either event A or B occurs is the sum of their probabilities decreased by the probability of both occur. In symbol, that is, the probability of A or B is equals to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B or the probability of A union B is equals to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B, which means the probability of A intersection B is not equal to zero. To apply this, let us have some examples. Example number one, we have our problem Maven Prime has 3 10 peso, 4 5 peso, and 5 1 peso coins in her pocket. She takes one coin from her pocket at random. What is the probability that it is a 10 peso or a 1 peso? So for our solution, 
These are mutually exclusive events since a coin cannot be a 10 peso and a 1 peso at the same time. Since the probability of getting a 10 peso or a 1 peso is equals to 0, you can then find the sum of the individual probabilities. To solve this, we have to add first the total number of coins and that is 3 plus 4 plus 5 which is equals to 12. This will be our sample space. So, the probability of getting a 10 peso or a 1 peso coin is equals to the probability of getting a 10 peso plus the probability of getting 1 peso. The number of ways to get 10 peso is 3. Since there are 3 10 peso coins, that will become 3 over 12. Plus, the number of ways to get 1 peso is 5. That will become 5 over 12. To add this, 3 plus 5 is equals to 8 and copy the denominator which is 12. We have 8 over 12. Reduce the lowest term by dividing both numerator and denominator by 4. That is equals to 2 over 3. Therefore, the probability of selecting a 10 peso or a 1 peso is 2 thirds or 67 hundredths. Let's have another example. Example number 2. A woman's footwear store owner buys from three companies, A, B, and C. The most recent purchases are shown below. If one is selected at random, what is the probability that it was purchased from company B or company C? As shown in the table below, we have the products, doll shoes and rubber shoes. For the company A, the number of doll shoes is 30 and the number of rubber shoes is 15, 45 in total. For the company B, the number of doll shoes is 24 and the number of rubber shoes is 20, 44 in total. And for the company C, the number of doll shoes is 16 and the number of rubber shoes is 22, total of 38. The total number of doll shoes in the three companies is 70 and the total number of rubber shoes in the three companies is 57. So we have 127 total number of footwears. So for our solution, events B and C are mutually exclusive since they have no outcomes in common. That is, the probability that it was purchased from company B or C is equals to the probability that it was purchased from company B plus the probability that it was purchased from company C. So, 44 over 127 plus 38 over 127 and that is equals to 82 over 127 or 6,457 ten thousands. We can also round this off to the nearest hundreds and will become 65 hundreds. Now, let us test your understanding in identifying mutually exclusive and not mutually exclusive events by answering this activity. Determine whether each of the following situations is a mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive event. Number 1. Throwing the ball up and down. Number 2. Raising your arm and bending your knees. Number 3. Going inside and outside of the classroom. Number 4. Getting both head and a tail when tossing a coin. Number 5. Getting a king and a diamond when picking a card from standard deck. I will give you 20 seconds to accomplish this task. You may now start. Time's up. Let us now check your answers. Number one, throwing the ball up and down, it is mutually exclusive. Number two, raising your arm and bending your knees, it is not mutually exclusive. Number three, going inside and outside of the classroom, it is mutually exclusive. Number four, getting both head and a tail when tossing a coin, it is mutually exclusive. 
number 5, getting a king and a giant one when picking a card from standard deck, it is not mutually exclusive. So who among you got a perfect score? If that's so, great job! And for your assessment, it is a multiple choice. Choose the letter of the correct answer and write it down to your activity notebook. You may pause the video if needed. I will provide the answer key at the end of this video. You may start now. Lastly, let us not forget your assignment. All you have to do is take a screenshot and answer this problem showing your solution. You may submit your answer together with your Math 10 self-learning module. That's all for now, my dear grade 10 learners. I hope you have learned a lot. See you next time in another fun learning in mathematics lesson. This is your math teacher, Ms. Christine Joy Arumin, saying, Do the best that you can until you know better. And when you know better, you can do better. God bless and keep safe, everyone!